we will be dealing with the three special types of parallelograms a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. First, we have a rectangle. As you can see, a rectangle has four right angles. Second special parallelogram is a rhombus, wherein a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. And lastly, we have here a square. A square is a parallelogram with four right angles and four congruent sides. Special parallelograms based from the definition, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the squares are parallelograms and thus they inherit the properties of a parallelogram wherein it has two pairs of congruent sides. Aside from that, we can also state that a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. Let us look at the other properties of rectangles rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Property 1. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. Take note when you say diagonals, those were the line segments joining two vertices of a polygon and thus not lie on the same edge. Example, in this rectangle, the blue line segment represents the diagonals. I repeat, if this is property 1, in a parallelogram or in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So they must be equal in measure. One. In a rectangle ABCD, segment AC is equal to 50 inches. Find the value of segment BD. If you try to look at the figure, segment AC and segment BD or will be the diagonals of rectangle ABCD. For the solution, remember or use property 1. And by property 1, the diagonal segment AC and segment BD here are congruent. So if they are if they are congruent, their measurements must be equal. Hence, segment AC is congruent to segment BD, therefore BD is 50 inches. Rule number 2. In a rectangle, ABCD, segment AC is equal to 3x plus 1 and segment BD is equal to 21 minus 2x. Now find the value of x. So let's assume this is the figure for a rectangle ABCD. And for our solution, by property 1, the diagonals AC and BD are congruent. And with that, we could say that segment AC is congruent to segment BD. AC would be equal to BD. 3x plus 1, that is the measurement of AC, is equals to 1 to 1 minus 2x. That would be the measurement per, for BD. Next, transpose the necessary things you need to transpose. So we need to transpose 2x on the other side of the equation and 1 on the other side of the equation. That gives us 3x plus 2x equals 21 minus 1. 21 minus 1, that's 20. 3x plus 2x, that's 5x. So you will have 5x equals 20. Since this is not yet done because we are looking for the value of x, we need to divide both sides by 5 to cancel out 5. And as we cancel out 5, 5x divided by 5, that would be x. And 20 divided by 5, that's 4. So x equals 4, therefore, therefore x equals 4. Now we are down to our second property. Property number 2 states, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. In this rhombus, 
you have here your two diagonals. And if this is really a rhombus, the diagonals would create a 90 degrees angle. As they intersect, it creates a right angle or shall I say a 90 degrees angle. Number 3. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. In this rhombus, you have here a pair of opposite angles. And if you try to draw the diagonal, it clearly bisects your angles or your opposite angles. Another pair of opposite angles bisected by the diagonal. So, property number three, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. Example number three, consider the rhombus EFGH. Find the measure of each side and the measure of angle FGI and measure of angle IFG. In this figure, you have here the values of segment EF, segment EH, angle G, and angle I. Using the fact that all sides of the rhombus are congruent, we have segment EH is congruent to segment EF. EH is equals to EF. 9x minus 12, that is the measurement of EH, is equal to 5x plus 8, the measurement of EF. Next, transpose the necessary terms you need to transpose. So you will have 9x minus 5x equals 8 plus 12. Because we transpose negative 12 and 5x on the other side of the equations. And as we simplify 9x minus 5x, that would be 4x. And 8 plus 12, that would be 20. Since we're looking for the value of x in order to solve the measurement of each side, then we need to divide both sides by 4. 4x divided by 4, that would be x. And 20 divided by 4, that would be 5. Thus, each side is equal to 9x minus 12, 9 times 5, since x is 5, minus 12, 9 times 5 is 45, and 45 minus 12 is 33. So each side is 33 units. Three continuation. Now this time, let's find the measure of these two angles, angle FGI and IFG. In this figure, we need to look for these two angles, but take note, perpendicular lines form right angles. So by property 2, we know that angle HIG is equal to 90 degrees. So you will have there, 2Y plus 15 is equal to 90. 2y is equal to 90 minus 15 since we need to transpose 15 on the other side of the equation that gives us 2y equals 75. And as we simplify by dividing both sides by 2, y is equal to 37.5. And by substituting y to the remaining values of angle FGI, that would be y plus 3 degrees y is 37.5, 37.5 plus 3 is equals to 40.5. So the measure of angle FGI is 40.5 degrees. And angle IFG is equal to 90 minus 40.5 that gives us 49.5. Therefore, the side of the rhombus is 33. The measure of angle FGI is 40.5 degrees and the measure of angle IFG 
is equal to 49.5 degrees. Property number 4. If a parallelogram is a square, then its diagonals are congruent, perpendicular, and bisect each other. We could say that th the first three properties combined as one is equivalent to property four and best describes a square. So in this square, the, the diagonals are congruent, so both these two diagonals are equal in measure. Second, they are perpendicular, that means it creates a 90 degrees angle. Third, it bisects each other. Example number four. A square LOVE. Segment LX is equal to 40 meters. Determine segment OE and the measure of angle OVX. If this is your figure, we need to look for segment OE and OVX. Segment OE here is a diagonal. Since the diagonals OE and LV are congruent and bisectors of each other, OE is equals to 2LX. That means twice the measure of LX. So that gives us 80 meters. So segment OE, a diagonal OE, is equivalent to 80 meters. Also, since every vertex angle of the square is right angle, the measure of angle OVX is 45 degrees. Therefore, OE is equal to 80 meters and measure of angle OVX is 45 degrees properties of a special parallelogram. Number 5. If one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Again, if one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Next property. Property number 6. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Again, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Property number 7. If one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. If one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Properties 8, 9, and 10. Property number 8. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Again, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Number 9. If one diagonal of a parallelogram bisect a pair of opposite angles, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Again, if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Property number 10. If a parallelogram has a right angle and two congruent adjacent sides, then the parallelogram is a square. If a parallelogram has a right angle and two congruent adjacent sides, then the parallelogram is a square. Now let's have some examples for properties 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 
Determine whether the given parallelogram is a rectangle, rhombus, or a square. Then, state the theorem that justifies your answer. A. A is a rectangle. It satisfies theorem 5. Theorem 5, it shows that parallelogram contains a right angle that makes it a rectangle. B. B is a rhombus and it satisfies theorem number 8. Since the diagonals of the parallelogram are perpendicular, Theorem 8 guarantees that this is a rhombus. C. This is a square and it satisfies Theorem 10. The figure contains a right angle and two congruent adjacent sides that makes them Theorem 10 justifies that it is a square.